Hey YouTube, Ace Pinkter here, and I realized that on my live performance patches, the tutorial was pretty complicated for people who were not very familiar with the combinator. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to create our own combinator from scratch and try to see just how to make it perform the way we want it to. Okay, uh, this is what we're going to do: create a 6-2 mixer, and with that selected, go ahead and, and throw in some some, I don't know, I'm going to use Maelstrom's just for the hell of it, okay, and uh, just choose some patches, doesn't really matter too much at this point, we're just going to do this for educational purposes only, so I've got two pads here, let's see what they sound like, this is FAD, and that's my tone wheel pad, alright, that's cool, I like that, um, Tone wheel pad, I think, would sound pretty good if we threw a, uh, let's put a filter on it. And this filter, we are going to give it some gate events through a matrix by connecting the gate to envelope gate input on the filter now. Right now, this is in 1 16th resolution all the way across. We're just going to leave it as it is. And let's see what kind of sound we can get out of it now. wrong one okay now it doesn't change a whole lot right now because the frequency is still default but now you can hear it kind of a pulsating rhythm that gives it more of a mid-range volume and the release is kind of going to affect the sharpness that's pretty good I like it right there okay now I want to know how they would sound if they were played together now I guess what I could do is I could throw some notes into the sampler and then duplicate them for each track but there's a better way what we're gonna do is hold shift and select each of the instruments that we just collect or constructed including the mixer I'm going to say combine. I'm just going to give this a name. Filter pad. So, what this should do is as long as I have filter pad selected in my sequencer, when I play a note, how about that? I can hear both filters. Or rather, both pads. Okay, that's one reason to use a combinator. It's when you want to have two instruments playing the same note, or receiving the same inputs. Now, I've uh, got a whole bunch of inputs here I can use if I were to throw in Dr. X. It would also play uh, drums, and we could treat those as if they were being or played by the same instrument. Maybe you want to have, I don't know, um, a vocoder handling those as modulation events. doesn't matter. Another reason you want to use a combinator is for the ease of automation. Let's take a look at our maelstroms here. <clears throat> Let's say what we want to do is make drastic changes to, uh, I don't know, let's say the octaves here. What I'm going to do is put oscillator A octave and oscillator B octave are controlled by rotary 1. Notice at the bottom there are two blank slots you can assign these to either rotaries or buttons to give you some extra, I guess, uh, extra knobs that you can manipulate with just the one, the one knob. This is on a per instrument basis. So, first locate your instrument, and then assign your parameters. So all we're doing is we're going to say, I want rotary one to affect this particular setting, and you just locate it in the menu oscillator A, oscillator B, okay, and it's going from 0 to 8. Now, um, what that does, what that should do is whenever I change, if you watch the active buttons, you'll see that they follow mine as I make the change. Okay. <laughs> so, I don't know. So, uh, I've got some pretty funky effects here right now. 
that's, a, that's all it is. The combinator is a way for me to take one knob and turn it into the effects of, uh, well, as many as many as I want to program. I guess I can have one knob affect up to three parameters per instrument. So the more instruments I have, the more uh, flexibility, or rather the, the more power that one knob can wield. Now, having it set as the octave is probably not a good idea. I don't know why you'd want to do that. But um, having it affect something like an LFO can give you a great range of subtle effects. I want to talk right now about um, this one is one that I put together is called Strummer Deluxe and this is a, has some very complicated programmings here. They might not look like a whole lot but the overall effect of them is quite significant. What this combinator is, it's six samplers all playing the AC guitar and each one is represented by a different string. I have them labeled as such. You have the E string, A string, and G string. Now because they all receive the same notes what I've had to do is make changes to the semitones and the octaves so that they weren't all playing a C if I hit the C. All right, if, if I play an E chord, E should be playing E, A should be playing B, um, and so on. It's, or yeah, B, is that what it is? Um, you get the idea. Each one should be playing a different note to make the chord. They shouldn't all be playing the same instrument. So I've given them offsets on the semitone and in the higher, um, I've given them uh, offsets in the octave range. This is my higher E, it's uh, two octaves above my first E, and that's enough to make that work. So, um, the overall effect of this is that when I play a one key on the keyboard, uh, it will generate a chord for me. Let me find my thing here. There it is. So when I, when I press C, I get a nice C chord. Now, I've actually programmed a lot of variety into this. Um, I've got two buttons down below for the major and minor switch, and one button for the seventh chord. And what that does is in on the D string, if you wanted to play a minor, you would lift a finger and reduce um, your position by one note. So I've just done that by manipulating the semitone to say this. When button one is on, that's how you read this. When button one is on, the max value applies to this. And when it's off, the minimum value applies to this. So if the button is off, semitone is a three. If it's on, it's a two. And that's enough to make this major chord into a minor chord. Cool. Um, I've also got a programming for the seventh chord, which takes place on the G string, I think. No? Nope. Yeah, G string. And that drops it down by two. Not bad. I made some other changes here so that it would sound like if you're playing with a pick, as opposed to fingers, it's just got a less, less of an attack and a little bit of reverb. Play with the scale to get an instrument that sounds more like the type of body that you're looking for. And the strumming effect is what I'm really proud of here. There are six, there are six delays, which I'll make changes to as you can see. When I move that knob, they all change in proportion. Okay, And they go from very quick values, so that's a fast one medium range strum and very slow strums okay and the way we've done that is we've just assigned a different maximum and a minimum value for each instance okay this one goes from 19 to 305 the next one goes from 30 to 450 and I know they sound like just kind of wacky numbers but uh, it's kind of hard to get the a right the right number here it doesn't really go one by one it'll go in huge increments so uh, that's how we did that I've also got um, a set of delays for the back so that when I let go of the note, it plays it in reverse from the top down. Okay? Um, 